How's it, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Extra Turns. Today, we have a couple special guests, including Covert Go Blue and our friend and yours, Olivia Gobert-Hicks. And we also have a really fun theme. Everybody in this game, Rachel and Jimmy are also in it, uh, are playing cat-themed decks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cat commanders for sure. That's right. (laughs) And one person is playing sort of a hybrid cat and dog deck. So there there are some dogs (laughs) running around in there, but it's mostly cats. And Jimmy's cat is... Deeply Phyrexianized, so it's a little gnarly, but it counts. It counts. <laughs> it is a really fun game. Before we get into it, if you want to build yourself a cat deck or maybe any other kind of deck, Lord of the Rings, let's say, it's right, it's here now. Uh, go to cardkingdom.com slash command. That is the best place to go to buy all your magic products, singles, anything at all. We love Card Kingdom here at the Command Zone. We use it all the time because they have a huge inventory, so any card you're looking for, they're going to have it in any version you're looking for, in any condition you're looking for. And then, of course, once you add all those cards to your cart, it's one retailer. They give it to you in one package. It all arrives at the same time. Yeah. Again, cardkingdom.com slash command. Once those cards are in your hand, you're going to need to protect them. Go to ultrapro.com slash command for the highest quality magic accessories in the biz. They've got sleeves and deck boxes, binders, dice. I love Ultra Pro because they have access to all of the licensed magic art, especially for Lord of the Rings. It's very mm-hmm. exciting because there's so many awesome art work pieces that were made specifically for this set and they're available on sleeves and play mats everywhere uh, so again you can support the show and support your cards by going to ultpro.com slash command yeah i gotta say right now i have a sweet aragorn play mat but it's my mouse pad it's yeah. just this huge mouse pad and i love it because i have a lot of real estate to work with and also it's aragorn so it looks sweet yeah and you're like i'm going to battle <laughs> that's right with my keyboard <laughs> click click <laughs> <laughs> and of course the final way to support all of our content is directly if you go to patreon.com slash command zone we have all kinds of cool perks for our patrons and supporters you can do things like watch extra turns and game nights earlier than the general public. We also have exclusive uh, content there, including Turn Talk, which is a conversation amongst the players from every Extra Turns episode right after the game. So they get to ask questions like, what were you thinking at this point? What did you have there? There's a lot of points in games where you're like, oh, I could do this or that, and I'm not sure which one's right. And they get to have a lot of discussions. I've actually learned a lot listening to the people talk after the game about how they think through their plays and things like that. Having said that. Let's get into the game. Yeah, let's see what these crazy cats can do. Ha <laughs> ha. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Extra Turns. Today on the show, we have two guests who have been here before, and they are a delight. Hey, everybody. It's me. It's CGB. You may know me from my MTG Arena YouTube channel or from the Covert Go Crew Commander Show, and I'm here to bring the ferocious feline festivities to Extra Turns. Hey, everyone. It's Olivia Gobert-Hicks from the Commander Rules Committee, Elder Dragon Hijinks, and Commander at Home, and I'm here to wipe the floor with my friends. If you have a furry friend nearby, get him on your lap, because this episode is as much for them as it is for you. It's the cats episode. The kitty cats I'm playing today are Arabo, Roar of the World, and Kahira, the companion. This is a cat tribal deck full of low-costed kitties. Because if I can get my felines out fast, my commander's eminence ability can pump them into huge attackers. Throw in some cat lords and card draw to keep things purring, and I'll grind my opponents into kitty litter. We have cats and dogs because the commander I'm playing is Rin and Sari, inseparable. This deck is full of ferocious kitties and doggies. And whenever I cast a cat or a dog, my commander makes a token of the other type. Once I fill the board with furry friends, I can pump up my precious pets and swing out for the win. The feline brew I brought is Denry Klin, Editor-in-Chief. This is a copycat deck. Because I plan to get around the legend rule and use clones to copy my commander and everybody else's cute pets. And because of Denry's second ability, each copy will be bigger than the last. So I've got some counter synergies to make the most of my growing army of editors, along with some feline flicker combos to make things really pop off. My cat mander today is Bremaz, Blight of Arescos. I want to play lots of Phyrexians so my commander will fill the board with incubators. Then I just need a sack outlet so I can start sending them to the bin each turn and proliferating a bunch of stuff. Between the plus one, plus one counters and the poison counters I can give my opponents, I'm gonna turn that proliferation into domination. All right, let's fight. Hail Phyrexia. It's time to make headlines. This deck's not kidding around. 
All right, everyone ready to play? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let us begin. I will draw my card for turn. I'll kick things off with a swamp. I'll tap the swamp and I'll cast a Vat of Rebirth. Oh. Pass turn. Okay, I will draw. I'm gonna play Secluded Courtyard choosing dogs. Tap it to add a white mana before casting this vanilla dog. Selfless oh, savior. A 1-1 one, one with no text. There's Pass. text? There is no text. <laughs> Pass the turn. All the cat players can agree that Olivia is arch enemy. Mm, arch yep. enemy. Arch enemy. Anyway, I will draw for turn. I will play a boulder loft pathway. And I will cast the first cat of the game. It's a glittering lynx. <laughs> so somebody, it's prevent all damage that would be dealt to him unless someone pays two. Gotcha. I'll pass to you, CGB. All right, I will draw for turn. I will play a flooded strand. I'm going to crack my flooded strand. I'm going to go find an island or plains card. Ooh. And it's going to be a hollowed fountain. It will come in untapped, and I have to pay the one life for the fetch land, so I go down to 37 altogether. I will tap my hollowed fountain. I will cast a soul ring. Uh-oh. Oh, Damn. It begins. Yikes. Now I'm done. I'll untap. I will draw my soul. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm going to play a planes. I'll tap for two mana and cast Knight's Whisper. So I'm going to draw two cards and lose two life. Nice. One and two, and I'll go to 38. That's gonna do it for me, pass turn. Okay, I will untap and go to my upkeep, then draw a card, play a forest. I'm going to tap two for nature's lore. So I'm gonna search my library and find any forest. I'm gonna get a temple garden. And I'm not a coward, so it will enter untapped and I will pay two life. Going to 38. I will play the second cat of the game. I'm gonna tap the temple garden for a sacred cat. Ooh. I'm going to swing at CGB for probably the only time with a 1-1 one, one dog. Oh yeah? Uh... You gonna block with your soul ring? Ugh. <laughs> I'll block with my face. Okay, deal. And I'll take one damage going right. to 36. Cool beans, I'll pass the turn. All right, I will untap and draw for turn. First things first, I'm going to combat. That will trigger my commander's eminence ability, so I will give glittering links plus three plus three. Gross. CGB, I'm gonna attack you for four. No blocks, I'll take four. Going to 32. Second main, I'm gonna play a Marsh Flats. I'm gonna crack it right now. So I'm gonna search for any planes card. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna find a Temple Garden. <gasps> I'm gonna lose one life from the fetch land and two from Temple Garden entering untapped. Going to 37. Uh, and then I'm gonna cast a Sylvan Library. Ooh, let's go! Uh, Full send? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what I got. I'll pass to you. All right, I'll untap, draw. I will play Sea of Clouds as my land for turn. Tap four, cast my commander, Denry Klin, Editor-in-Chief. I will choose to have it enter with a Vigilance counter on it. Then I'm done. All right, I'll untap. I'm gonna draw my card for turn. I will play a Fetid Heath as my land for turn. I'm not gonna do anything else. I'll pass turn to you, Olivia. Oh, mm. uh, well, okay. Interesting. I'll untap. Yep. I will draw a card. All right, I will play a mountain. I'm going to tap four and cast Rin and Siri. Inseparable. Cats and dogs. Okay, I'm going to send a kitty bonk to Rachel and a dog bonk to Jimmy. Okay, all right. I will take one going to 36. I will also take one and I'll go to 37. I will gain one from the kitty and go to 39. Pass turn. All right, I will untap. I will do a Sylvan Library, which I don't often do. Yeah. Mm. I'm kind of excited. Full send, full send. Full send, oh. I, I am going to pay four to keep one extra card and go to 32. I will play a Mutavolt as my land for turn, and then I'm gonna cast a Quizali Pride Mage. Great card. All right, I will go to combat, and I will trigger my commander's eminence ability targeting the Lynx. So it's now a 4-4. Four, four. Still pretty good attack over here. I'm gonna blow up your soul ring in a second, so you'll be okay. <laughs> sad. Wow. Sad, very sad. Uh, Olivia, I will attack you with a Chittering Lynx. Because it's attacking alone, that triggers my Kozali Pride Mage, so it will attack as a 5-5. In response, uh, I will take five damage and go to 34. Then I'll blow up your soul ring, CGB. <laughs> Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> oh. All right, I have done what I can. I'll pass to you, CGB. Untap, draw. I'll play an Urza Saga as my land for turn. Boo. Oh. Hey. That's a good one. The soul hey. ring's already gone. Yeah, you yeah, can go yeah. yeah. soul ring with that. I will trigger chapter one so it can tap for a colorless. Nice. And I will tap Urza Saga and Sea of Clouds to cast Luminarch Aspirant. It will enter with a vigilance counter because of my commander. I will move to combat, and I will use Luminarch Aspirant to put a plus one, plus one counter on Denry Clint. 
The time for vengeance is meow. Rachel? <laughs> I'm attacking you with Denry Klin, editor in chief with vigilance and a plus one plus one counter for three damage. Sounds right to me. Uh, I will take it all and go to 29. Then I'm done. You know, Rachel, you not attacking me yeah. saved your Sylvan library. I'm hey, just thanks. gonna go and draw my card for turn. Damn. Play a swamp, and then I'm just gonna tap for four mana and cast my commander, Bremaz, Blight of Arescos. Anyway, this cat is Phyrexian and uh, way cooler as a result, like he went to Hot Topic or something. Pass hey. turn to you, Olivia. <laughs> tap, drop. I will play a Spire Garden for turn. I am going to tap two and play Pack Leader. That card is sneaky good. Yeah. yeah. I have cast the dog spell. I will get a 1-1 one, one green cat creature token. Second part of my main phase, I'm gonna tap a Spire Garden for green and play a wild Nacoddle. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Ren and Sari will trigger. I will get a dog token. Nice. And then I'll go to combat. I'll swing Ren and Sari at Jimmy. Ren and Sari is a 5-5. Five, five. All right, I'm not gonna block. That would be cat on cat violence. I'll take five and go to 32. I will pass the turn. All right. I will untap and do the Sylvan Library. Sweet. I'm gonna put them back this way, keeping this one. First things first, I'm going to cast a soul ring I just found. Whoa, blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> I have soul rings too. Well, now we all know who to attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rings get dings. Uh, and then I am going to pay three and I'm gonna cast an Archaeomancer's map. Ooh. And so I'm gonna go get some planes. Got it. I found these two planes. I'll play one of them as my land for turn. Then I'm gonna cast Open the Armory. I'm gonna search my library for any equipment or aura card. I found a Lion Sash and that'll go into my hand. Um, the board's getting a little messy, so I think I'm gonna pass the turn here. Go ahead, CGB. I will untap, I will draw for turn. Urza Saga Chapter Two will trigger. And I can now, if I want to, make a construct. I will play Planes as my land for turn. I will tap four, and I'm going to cast Machine God's Effigy. Ooh. I will have it enter as a copy of Luminarch Aspirant. I will move to combat. My Machine God's Effigy, which is a Luminarch Aspirant, will put a plus one, plus one counter on my Luminarch Aspirant. And my Luminarch Aspirant will put a plus one, plus one counter on Denry Clint. So, Luminarch Aspirant's now a 2-2, and Denry Klin is now a 4-4. Not good. I will send my commander, Denry Klin, at you, Jimmy. Okay. I'll declare no blocks, take four damage, and go to 28. All right, then I'm done. Okay, untap and draw. I'll play my land for turn. It is a Shattered Sanctum. Jimmy, because you now control more lands than me, that triggers my Archaeomancer's map, so I'm going to put this planes into play. I'll tap for two mana. I will cast my first Phyrexian of the game. It's Vran, Executioner Thane. Mm -hmm. Because it's a Phyrexian creature, it is going to trigger my commander, Bremaz, so I'm going to incubate X, where X is equal to that spell's mana value. So this is an incubator token with two plus one plus one counters on it, and I can pay two mana to transform it into a creature. Yikes. That's going to do it for me. Pass turn to you, Olivia. Okie dokie. I'll untap and drop. I will play a planes for turn. I will tap four. For Kit Kanto, Mayhem Diva. Yikes. And that's a cat spell that triggers my commander and I will make a dog token. As Kit Kanto enters the battlefield, I will make a 1-1 one, one green-white citizen creature token. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna go to combat. Kit Kanto will trigger it. I'm gonna tap these two dogs. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give Rin and Sari plus two plus two trample and goad it. I'm gonna swing Rin and Sari at Rachel. Mm -hmm. Also, it will get a 1-1 one, one from Pack Leader. Seven seven. So it's yeah, a seven seven. Seven seven. Uh, well, I can block with my glittering links, which only prevents one of the trample damage. Okay. Uh, so I will take six commander yes. damage, going to twenty three. I will pass the turn. On your end step, I think before this trample train gets moving, I'm going to attempt to swords Kit Kanto. Fair uh, enough. Um, My enemy has been declared. I'm sorry. I, I I will literally die accidentally to that card. Yeah. Uh, okay, you gain three life. I'll go to 37. Uh, I will go to untap and draw my three cards for the turn. Put these two back in this order. All right, first I will pay four and I'm gonna cast Guardian Project. Then I am going to cast the creature I search for, it's Lion Sash. Uh, when that enters the battlefield, I will draw a card from Guardian Project and I will play that card for turn. It is a Gavany Township. I do not feel safe on this board. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have any great attacks, so I will pass to you, CGB. All right, I will untap and draw. Urza Saga Chapter 3 will trigger. 
but first I'm going to tap it to float a mana. Then I will search my library for an artifact card with one or zero mana value and put it into play. You should look for a soul ring. <laughs> oh, and he's already he's hurt. <laughs> I have fetched the Ozolith. Mmm, a pretty one. And that will go directly onto the battlefield. I will play a land for turn, it's Forbidden Orchard, and I will use the one colorless mana in my mana pool and tap four. I will cast Elspeth Resplendent. Ooh, Ooh scary. Rachel, you look like you need a hand, so <laughs> I will give you a spirit with wow. my Forbidden Orchard. What a friend. I am suspicious of spot removal, so I'm actually going to minus three the Elspeth. <laughs> I will look at the top seven cards of my library. Uh-oh. I have found an Esper Sentinel. Wow. Mm. It will enter the battlefield with a shield counter because of Elspeth. It will also get a vigilance counter because of Denry Klin. And it will get two plus one plus one counters because of Denry Klin. Bad. I will move to combat. My Machine God's Effigy and my Luminarch Aspirant will trigger. The Effigy will put a plus one plus one counter on the Luminarch Aspirant. The Luminarch Aspirant will put a plus one, plus one counter on the Esper Sentinel. Jeez. All right, Jimmy, I will attack you with Denry Klin, Editor-in-Chief, as a Vigilant 4-4. All right, I will declare no blocks, and I'm going to take four damage and go to 24. All right, after that, I'm done. On your end step, I'm going to tap for three mana, and I'm going to cast Anguish Unmaking, and I'm going to target your Esper Sentinel. Esper Sentinel has something to say. There is a trigger. Can you pay the four? <laughs> pay the four? Heck no. Mr. Absolutely. Grimora Esper Sentinel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I will draw a card. And I will lose three life and go to 21. Esper Sentinel will be exiled, but all the counters will go to the Ozolith because whenever a creature leaves the battlefield. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. good. Very good. All right, let's untap my stuff and I will draw my card for turn. I'll play my land for turn. It's a Karn's Bastion. I'm gonna start things off and play a creature. I'm gonna cast Archfiend of the Dross. Ooh. Yeah. That's a big old flyer. Mm -hmm. It's going to enter the battlefield with four oil counters on it. Archfiend of the Dross is a Phyrexian, so that will trigger my commander, and I will incubate again for four. So I create an incubator token with four plus and plus encounters on it. And then I will tap for a white and a black, and I'm gonna cast Rite of Oblivion. Mm. As an additional cost to cast this spell, I need to sacrifice a non-land permanent, and I get to exile target non-land permanent. So I will sacrifice my first incubator token and attempt to exile the Ozolith. Oh, my baby. No responses. <laughs> yep, that resolves. Ozolith will be exiled, and Oof. the counters are gone. Right. That was terrifying. Bye, yeah. rock friend. When I sacrifice that token, my Vat of Rebirth is going to trigger, and I'm going to add an oil counter onto it. And that's it for me. Pass turn to you, Olivia. Okie dokie. I will untap all these lands and dogs. I'll draw. I will tap three mana for Kahira, the Orphan Guard. Oh, all your cats have plus one, plus one, and vigilance now. Yes. Yeah, pretty good. Yes, kitty. So I will get a dog token. Uh, I'll go to attacks. I'm going to attack with Pack Leader and Rin and Seri. So Pack Leader is swinging at CGB for two, and Rin and Seri is coming in for six. I will have Luminarch Aspirant of uh, 3 3 block the Pack Leader. I will take six damage from Rin and Siri. Cool. Going down to 26 life. Uh, pack Leader prevents that damage, so we're cool there. I call that a day and pass. Uh, Olivia, at your end step, I'm gonna activate my Lion Sash, Exile Urza Saga from your graveyard. I'll put one plus one plus one counter on it. I will untap and I will draw for turn. Uh, I will keep one and put back two. Play it safe. Come on. Then four mana and cast a Leonin War Leader. Ooh. Oh, the cute, the one. cute one! He's a cute one! Kitty. He's a good one. When he enters the battlefield, that'll trigger my Guardian project, and I will draw a card. And then I'm gonna cast Step Links. When that enters the battlefield, I will draw another card from the Guardian project. Then I will play an Arid Mesa as my land for turn. That's gonna trigger my Step Links, so it'll become a 2-3 until end of turn. And then I'm gonna pay three mana to put my companion, Kahira, into my hand. I'm gonna go to combat, yep. and I'm gonna trigger my commander's eminence ability, making the glittering links a 4-4. Four, four. And Olivia, I will attack you for four. I will block with the 1-1 one, one citizen. When that citizen creature dies, it will trigger my Archfiend of the Dross, and the controller of the creature loses two life. Go to 35. A tiny chip at that life total. I will pass to you, CGB. I will untap, I will draw. Okay, I will play an island as my land per turn, and I will plus Elspeth Resplendent. 
I'm going to target Denry Klin, editor in chief, and I'm going to put a plus one plus one counter and a flying counter on him. Uh oh. Yeah, that's Five. plus three plus three flying mm-hmm. and vigilance. Yeah. Yeah, I will take a chance. I'm going to activate Ren and Seri's ability. Pay three. Tap Ren and Seri as well. Targeting Denry Klin. I have six dogs, so I will deal six damage to Denry, and then I have five cats, so I will gain five life. In response, I will tap a white, and yeah. I will cast Boon of Safety to put a uh-huh. shield counter nice. on target creature. Okay. Nice. And I'm going to target Denry Klin and try yeah. to shield from your doggy lightning, he- your doggy lightning helix or whatever uh-huh. it is. That it's okay, will... it's a dog gun. Yeah. Yeah, dog. your dog gun. It's a dog helix. All right, does that resolve? <laughs> Certainly, I have nothing else to say about it. I will nonetheless gain five life because it is a separate sentence. So we get the shield counter and I will scry one. Mm-hmm. So that will hit uh, Denry for six. Yep, and that will remove the shield counter. Great, uh, the life gain will be five. That will put me at 40. Then Elspeth Resplendent's ability will resolve. Denry will gain a flying counter and a plus one, plus one counter, becoming a five, five. Then I will tap four, and I'm going to try to cast Irenicus's Vile Duplication to create a token. No. That's a copy of target creature you control, except it has flying and it isn't legendary. Pretty good. I am going to try to make a copy of Denry Klin. The important thing to note, though, is that this is a token, so it won't gain the counters on the current Denry. Right. Mm -hmm. But it will gain one uh, from entering the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no responses. The copy will enter with a first strike counter. Oh my. I will move to combat, and that will trigger the Machine God's Effigy and the Luminarch Aspirant. I will attempt to put both plus one plus one counters on the copy. Again, no response. And then for attempting to kill my commander, Olivia, Denry Klin will fly over to you for five. Totes fair. I will take five. Go to 35. And after that, I'm done. All right, I'm going to untap. In my upkeep, Archfiend of the Dross will trigger, and it will lose one oil counter. So it's going to go down to three. I will draw my card for turn. I'm going to first tap for three mana, and I'm going to cast Read the Bones. <gasps> bones, bones, Classic. bones, 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 bones. First, I'm going to scry two. I like both of them. I'm going to actually keep both cards on top and just draw them. And I'll also lose two life and go to 19. I'll play my land for turn. It's a bright climb pathway. All right, first things first, I'll move to combat. And CGB, I'm going to swing at Elspeth with my 6-6 six, six Archfiend of the Dross. Yeah, I knew that she didn't have too long to live. No blocks, Elspeth. Beth will die. Her time on this planet was resplendent, though. Mm-hmm. And then I will tap for two mana, and I will cast the Pyre of Heroes. Mm. Ah. Uh, and that's going to do it for me. Pass turn to you, Olivia. Delightful. I will untap. I will draw. Um, I'm going to play a Gavany Township for turn. All right. So I will tap for. I will play Marisi, Breaker of the Coil. Mm. Opponents can't cast spells during my combat, and whenever a creature I control deals combat damage to a player, go to each creature that player controls. Wow. Yeah. That will also. So, trigger Rin and Sari, because I cast a kitty, and I'll get a dog, and I'll move to combat. Uh, apologies to friends, I'm sorry. I mm-hmm. hope you guys have blockers. I'm going to attack CGB with pack leader and three dogs, and I will send Rin and Sari as well. All of it to me? All of it to you. You got very scary board. I would prefer it didn't come my way. I will block the three two two dogs with it. all of these creatures that have a higher th- toughness. Uh, pack leader and Rin and Sari will get through. And I'll take eight. Going to 18. That will trigger Marisi, so all your creatures are goaded. Not good. I will leave up Rin and Sari mana and pass the turn to Rachel. All right, I will untap and draw for turn. Oop, Sylvan Library. I will keep one and put these back this way. I'm gonna start this turn off by casting Dusk. Oh, boy, boy. Destroy all creatures with power three or greater. Three or greater? Yep. So, I have no response. I also have no response. Uh, okay, so in response to that, I will... Yeah. Do it. All right. Yeah. I can take it. Uh, I am going to quickly tap three and tap Rin and Sari to deal seven damage to your face mm-hmm. from seven doggos. And gain six and life. And I will gain six life. I will take seven to face, going to 16. I am then going to send the selfless savior home to a loving family and give Rin and Sari indestructible. When that happens, Archfiend of the Dross will trigger and you will lose two life, Olivia. Deal. Down to 39. And then the board wipe happens. All right. Whether you're searching for the latest sneaker drop, that iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. Yep, we're talking each inch, stitch, 
tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay's authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs. And as leaders in their fields, they're making sure your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, get that piece you've always wanted. And leave it up to the meticulous eyes of an eBay authenticator to make sure that watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made of genuine leather. And never get faked over again. In a world full of fakes, it's time to get real with eBay Authenticity Guarantee. Everyone deserves real. Visit ebay.com for terms. Uh, okay, my turn. What is it, turn 20? Uh, oh, okay, don't worry. I think I can finally win. Even after this cyclonic rift? What? <laughs> oh! What? I'm still feeling good. Thanks to Liquid IV, I'm always ready for the long game. Liquid IV is the number one powdered hydration brand in America. And it's not just for diehard athletes and marathon runners. Even if you're just going to work for the day or spending a game night with friends, proper hydration is essential. One stick of Liquid IV hydrates you two times faster than water alone. Plus, you get essential vitamins and great flavors like pina colada or strawberry. Best of all, Liquid IV is helping communities in need. They've donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. Hey, this is good. I think I could go a couple more turns. Yeah, we're all gonna mill out soon anyway. Ooh, even after this time twister. Oh, oh come on. on. Seriously? <laughs> My deck is no win cards. <laughs> real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code COMMAND at checkout. That's 20% off anything when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code COMMAND at liquidiv.com. Hey everyone, we are super excited to announce that we are now sponsored by Architect. Architect is the perfect place to build and store decks online, whether you want to build from scratch or catalog your collection. Everything is easy and intuitive. It's got the same feeling as when you sit at the table with your cards laid out right in front of you. Then, once your deck is done and ready to go, their built-in play tester is a great tool to make sure your brews work as intended. And, now that Architect has partnered with EDH Rec, they have all the resources and data they need to really refine and perfect the platform. So even if you've tried Architect in the past, it's definitely worth taking a new look right now. Just go to architect.com and start brewing on the best deck builder out there. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com. And then the board wipe happens? I have no response. I also have no response. All right, Dusk resolves. I lose my Leon and War Leader. I lose all three of my creatures. My Bremaz and my Archfiend of the Dross will die. I will lose Wild Nakatl, Kahira, and Marisi. All right, there are a bunch of triggers from Archfiend of the Dross here. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'll take two, going to 14. I will take six, going to 12. I'll take six, going to 33. That also is going to trigger Vran Executioner Thane, so each opponent is going to lose two life, and I will gain two life. Oh, why? <laughs> lose two to 31. Go to 12. Go to 10. I will gain two and go to 21. And finally, that will also trigger my Vat of Rebirth and two creatures enter the graveyard, so I will add two more counters to it. Okay, uh, next I am going to cast Kahira the Orphan Guard. Ooh. When Kahira enters, that'll trigger my Guardian Project, and I will draw another card. Then I will play that as my land for turn. It's a forest. That'll trigger my Step Links, making it a 2-3, but it's plus one, plus one from Kahira, so it's a 3-4. Sure. Then I will go to combat. That'll okay. trigger my commander's eminence ability. I will target my step links, making it a 6-7. I'm afraid. And Olivia, I'm going to attack you with my three cats. Okay. They have vigilance and plus one, plus one from Kahira. Olivia, I know you don't want your kitties to die. If I give you a 1-1, one, one, will you not attack me for a turn? Deal. Because I am really close to dead. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> okay, then before blockers, I would like to tap the Forbidden Orchard. And then Olivia, I would like to send you a 1-1 one, one spirit. Neat. Now we're going to go to blocks. So I will block step links with the spirit. And I will have Sacred Cat block the Lion Sash. All right, I guess you're just taking two then. Mm -hmm. I'll take two, but because of the life link, I will gain one and be down by one. Ending at 30. What a wimpy attack I just made. Not what I'd hoped, but I am going to sacrifice this Arid Mesa and I'm gonna go find any planes. I'm gonna get Canopy Vista and put it into play untapped. And I will lose a life going to 11. That'll trigger my step links, which will become an eight, nine. 
After that, I am going to cast a Great Henge. Ooh. For only two mana, because this is yep. a big kitty. Wow, Orange. synergy. That's all I got. I'll pass to you, CGB. I'll untap and then draw. I think it's time to just be everybody's friend as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> when you're at 10 life, what do you do? Yeah, yeah right? All right, I'll tap three, and I will cut a deal. Wow. <laughs> each opponent draws a card, and then I draw a card for each opponent who drew a card this way. Okay, I guess we all draw a card. And I will draw three. Seems good. I will play an island as my land for turn. I'll tap four, and I'm going to play an undercover operative. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have it enter as a copy of Vran, Executioner Thane. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Some life gain. You're scared. I am a yeah. little scared. <laughs> it will have a shield counter on it. I tap Forbidden Orchard to do that. So Olivia, my friend, to the end, you get another spirit. Yay! <laughs> and then I will move to combat, and I can't attack with it, but the Machine God Effigy will trigger because it's still a Luminarch Aspirant, mm -hmm. and I will put a plus one, plus one counter on the Undercover Operative. After that, I'm done. On your end step, I'm gonna pay two mana, and I'm going to transform my incubator artifact. And out erupts a Phyrexian token artifact creature that is a 4-4. Four -four. It's like a jelly bean. <laughs> and then I will move to my untap, upkeep, and I will draw for turn. All right, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and tap for seven mana and cast the Dark Steel Splicer. Oh, this card's so good. What does it do? What? Whenever Darkseal Splicer or another non-token Phyrexian enters the battlefield, I create X, 3-3 three, three, colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature tokens where X is the number of opponents I have. I'm gonna name this one Olivia, this one Rachel, and this one CGB. Could also name it Dead Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move to combat, and Olivia, you are at the highest life total, so I'll swing at you with a 4-4 four, four Phyrexian creature. I will block with the spirit. See ya, DJ. That's gonna be it for me. I'll pass turn to you, Olivia. Let me just then tap everything that's on my board, and I will draw a card. Fascinating. I will pay two for intangible virtue. Mm. Creature tokens I control have plus one, plus one in vigilance. Cool. I will move to attacks. Um, I'm gonna swing four tokens and pack leader at Rachel. I don't love this damage coming, so I'm gonna have to make some blocks with everything except Kahira. Okay. I will pay two for the links to go away. Oh, he is no longer powerful, boy. Well, uh, I blocked four things, yep. so I will, I have two unblocked. I'll take two damage, going to nine. All of my cats and DJ will yes. die. Sorry, bye. I will pass the turn. Uh, on your end step, I will tap the Great Henge and I will gain two life. Going to 11. Nice. I will untap and I will Sylvan Library. Oh. I'm gonna put these two back because we're, we're playing smart here. Well, I gotta try and get myself back in this, so I'm going to pay five and attempt to cast Dawn from my graveyard. No response from me. No responses. So I'm gonna get everything power two or less from my graveyard. I will get a Kazali Pride Mage, a Lion Sash, a Step Lynx, a Glittering Lynx, and those will all go to my hand. Whew. Well, let's get some cats down. I will pay a white and recast the Glittering Lynx. Mm -hmm. That will enter with a plus one counter. And I will draw two cards because of the Guardian Project and the Great Henge. Oof, that's value. Spicy little engine. I am going to tap the Great Henge and I will gain two life and add two green mana to my mana pool. Going to 13. First, I will cast a Jungle Lion. Uh, and once again, I will draw two cards and it will enter with a plus one, plus one counter. And then tap the Temple Garden and recast the Quisali Pride Mage. This again will enter with a plus one, plus one counter. And I will draw two cards. Nice. Then I will play a Plains as my land for turn. Okay, uh, I think that's the best I can do while leaving mana open, so I'm just gonna go to discard. I am going to discard a Six Sense and an Eerie Interlude. Oh, an Eerie Interlude. An Interlude with a Great Henge on the field <laughs> and a Guardian Project. Whoa. It doesn't save my life. I am totally, oh my goodness. totally well, back we, right we know there's some good stuff in hand. Mm -hmm. All right, pass with that. Untap, upkeep, and draw. I will tap three, and I'll cast Recruiter of the Guard. Ah, mm -hmm. nice. When it enters, I'm going to search my library for a creature with toughness two or less, reveal it, and put it into my hand, and then shuffle. Cool. All right, I have searched for a Glass Pool Mimic. Oh. And, and I'm going to put that into my hand. I'm going to play my land for turn. It's an Animal Sanctuary. Oh. <laughs> I will tap three, including a Forbidden Orchard. I'm going to give a 1-1 one, one Spirit to Jimmy this time. Oh, oh. yay! Oh, buddy Jimmy. I think the sacrifice deck knows what to do with it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I'm going to cast the Glass Pool Mimic. It will enter as a copy of Recruiter of the Guard. 
Oh. Time for another one. Oh, hey. See. This time I searched for a phantasmal image. Oh, this is hilarious. Mm. Huh. <laughs> I'll cast the phantasmal image and it will enter as a copy of Recruiter of the Guard. <laughs> okay, we're looking. We're really looking. This time I'm going to find Spark Double. <laughs> I know it looks like my deck is all about clones, but actually a copycat deck. <laughs> this was sweet. I've never seen this happen before. <laughs> I'm going to go to combat, and that will trigger my Machine God's effigy that is still a Luminarch Aspirant. <laughs> still aspiring. And I will put a plus one, plus one counter on my Recruiter of the Guard. Nice. Mm -hmm. After that, Jamie, I'm all done. All right, I'm going to untap all of my stuff and go to draw my card for the turn. I'm going to kick things off by tapping for four mana and casting one of my favorite creatures in Magic the Gathering. It's Yogmoth Thran Physician. Ooh, That's scary. a good one. I'm going to go to combat, and Rachel, I'm going to swing three Phyrexian Golems, a 4 4 Phyrexian, and a Spirit Token at you. I think this is the only way I don't die, so I don't love this play, but it is a play. I will put the Kazali Pride Mage in front of the Phyrexian. I will put Kahira in front of a Golem, and I will put the Glittering Lynx uh, in front of the Spirit. Uh, and then before damage, I'm gonna pay four, and I'm gonna cast Acroma's Will. Ooh, not the one I expected. Whoa. I, so I can tr don't control my commander, so I only get to choose one, but I'm going to have my creatures gain lifelink, indestructible, and protection from all colors until end of turn. In response, what I'm going to do is activate Yogmoth's ability. Mm -hmm. First, I'm gonna sacrifice the spirit token, paying one life, going to 20, putting a minus one, minus one counter on Kahira and I will draw a card. That is also gonna trigger Vron, so each opponent's gonna lose two life and I will gain two life. I will lose two, going to 11. Lose two, going to 28. I will lose two, going to eight. And I will gain two, going to 22. That is going to also trigger Vat of Rebirth, and that's gonna put another oil counter on it, moving it up to four. And then I'm gonna activate Yogmoth again, paying one life, going to 21. I'm gonna sacrifice the 4-4 Phyrexian creature. I'm gonna put another minus one, minus one counter on your Kahira. That will kill Kahira. And then I'm going to draw a card. That is also going to trigger Vat of Rebirth one more time. And I'm gonna go up to five oil counters. This will deal no damage, this will deal no damage. I've got six coming through. And that's gonna be it for me. Pretty good. I will lose six, going to five. I'll play my land for turn, it is a swamp. And then I'm going to tap for three mana, and I'm going to activate the Vat of Rebirth, removing four oil counters from it. Jeez. That's bad. And I'm gonna return my Archfiend of Dross to the battlefield. Very good. It's gonna enter with four oil counters, and then it will trigger my Dark Steel Splicer, so I'll create another three 3-3 three, three colorless golem creatures. What? Yeah. That's how that works? It's so bad. Oh my goodness. That's gonna do it for me. I'll pass turn to you, Olivia. Now, yeah. Olivia, What's up? you have the most creatures on the board, which means this Archfiend of Dross is a huge problem for yes, you. Yes, it is. Is it? I have gained no life. I'm at five and can die to either of them at any point. Yes. I can also help with the Jimmy problem. Problem? Jimmy or problem. If I have a removal spell in hand, I will use it on something on Jimmy's board, but I cannot if, if I don't die. untap. Okay. Jimmy can kill me. It's Just fine. make him I... use his resources. What? All right, Jimmy, on that spicy little end step of yours, <laughs> I'm gonna pay three, I'm gonna pay Naya, Taprin and Sari, and Yogg for six. In response to the Rin and trigger, I'm gonna activate Yogmoth one time, paying one life and sacrificing one of my Phyrexian Golems. And then I will put a minus one, minus one counter, Rachel, on your three, two. Okay, it is down to a two, one. Uh, and then I will draw a card. That's also gonna trigger my Vat of Rebirth and bring it up to two. I will activate Yogmoth again, going to 19, sacrificing one of my Phyrexian Golems. And Rachel, I'm gonna put another minus one, minus one counter on your creature. Yep, Jungle Lion will go to the graveyard. I will draw a card from Yogmoth. When that creature dies, Rachel, it'll trigger my Archfiend of the Draw, so you will lose two life. All right, I will lose two, going to three. That also is gonna trigger Vat of Rebirth, and I'll put another oil counter on it. I will activate Yogmoth again, paying one life, going to 18. I'm gonna sacrifice my last tapped Phyrexian Golem. And I'm gonna put a minus one, minus one counter, Rachel, on your 2-2. Two -two. All right, that will remove the plus one, plus one counter from it. And then I will draw a card. All right, I'm gonna activate Yogmoth another time, and I'm gonna go to 17. This time I'll sacrifice one of my untapped Phyrexian Golems. And I'll put one more minus one, minus one counter on that creature, Rachel. That will kill the Glittering Lynx. 
I will draw a card, and the Archfiend of the Dross will trigger. You're gonna lose another two life. Mm -hmm. I will go to one. And then the Vat of Rebirth will trigger, and I'll put another oil counter on it. All right, Yawgmoth, one last time activating, going to 16 life. I'm gonna sacrifice one more of my Phyrexian Golems, leaving me with one. And this time, I'm gonna target your Phantasmal Image, Ooh. CGB. Very slick. All right, uh, that puts a trigger on the stack that says when this becomes a target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. Very good. And the Phantasmal Image will die. And that will trigger my Vran, which is an undercover Vran. <laughs> God, that Vran! I will gain two life, going to 10. And all of you will lose two life. I'll take two and go to 14. I'll take two, go to 26. And I will go to negative one. Yogmoth and Golems! <laughs> I'm not gonna draw a card off of Yawgmoth this time because the Phantasmal Image died when I targeted it, so I'm not gonna get the resolution of the effect. Mm -hmm. But CGB, you will lose two life from my Archfiend of the Dross seeing your creature die. I just gained that. <laughs> I'll lose two going to eight. And finally, the Vat of Rebirth is gonna tick up and go to five. And then one last thing while this is still on the stack, I'm gonna tap my Shattered Sanctum for white. And Olivia, I'm gonna path to exile your Renin Seri. Ooh. Is unacceptable. Sent the dog away. I did send the dog oh, away. The dog cat away. Farm upstate. All right, Rin and Sari will be exiled, but the damage remains on the stack. You do get to search for a basic land, though. I'll get this mountain, and it comes into play tapped. I'm going to keep this train going. I'm going to activate Yogmoth another time, paying one life. And this time, I'm going to sacrifice the Dark Steel Splicer. And I'm going to put a minus one, minus one counter on your pack leader, Olivia. OK. I will draw a card. And that will take up my Vat of Rebirth one more time to six. And once more into the breach, I will activate Yawgmoth one final time. I will sacrifice this Phyrexian Golem. And I'll put one more Minus One Minus One counter on your pack leader, Olivia. Pack leader to the yard. I will draw a card and one more counter on the Vat of Rebirth. When that creature dies, it's also going to trigger my Archfiend of the Dross, so Olivia, you'll lose two life. Down to 24. Now Ren and Seri's ability will resolve, and my Yawgmoth is going to die. I will gain one life from my one kitty up to 25. Whoosh! What a turn! Oh, what a yard right. moth. It was not a turn. That was an end step. You're right. <laughs> that You're was right. an end step. I'll go to my discard. I will discard a Blight Belly Rat, a Throne of Beath, and a Vault of Champions. And I'm done. Pass turn. I will untap and I'll drop. And then. I'm gonna tap three for a Prowling Serpent Mm-hmm. Sweet. I'm gonna tap four and Gavany Township to put a one-one on all of my creatures. Now all of these tokens are three threes and the Serpent Part is a five-four. That's bad. Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Gonna send uh, one, two, three, four dogs at you and one cat. All right, I will block the dog with the Archfiend of the Dross and one of the other dogs with Vran Executioner Thane. Okie dokie. All right, that means one dog will die. And I will lose my Vran Executioner Thane. Mm -hmm. And Archfiend of the Dross will see that dog die and you're gonna lose two life. Down to 23. And then I will take nine damage going to three. Don't kill me, please. And I'll pass the turn. All right, untap, draw my card for turn. I will tap four. I'm gonna cast my spark double that you guys knew about. Mm -hmm. That is going to enter as a copy of Recruiter of the Guard. And it also enters with a plus one, plus one counter. All right. So I'm gonna search my library again. I'm going to search for Displacer Kitten. Ooh. Oh, my. The greatest kitten of them all. I'm going to tap four, and I'm going to give a Forbidden Orchard Spirit to Jimmy. Oh, cool. And I am going to play the Displacer Kitten. That's a good cat. I will move to combat, and Machine God Effigy will trigger because it's still Luminarch Aspirant. And I'll put a <laughs> plus one, plus one counter on the Displacer Kitten. Wow. Mm. All right, Jimmy. Yeah? I'm not attacking. Yeah, I figured. Yep, your turn. It goes without saying that I'm probably not going to attack you this turn either. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're in, a, in the same boat right yeah, now. Yeah, we are in a boat. And the boat is really, it's a cute boat. There's a lot of animals on it. It's a very adorable boat. It's a real yeah. Noah's Ark, but if they saved just dogs. <laughs> All right, Archfiend of the Dross will trigger, and it's going to lose an oil counter. So it's going to go down to three. And draw my card. First things first, I'm going to tap for three mana and activate the Vat of Rebirth. Ooh, not good. So I'll take four oil counters off it. And I'm going to put the Dark Steel Splicer back on the battlefield. However, I only have two opponents this time, so I only get two golems. Then I'm going to tap for four mana 
and I'm gonna play a trading post. Hmm. Oh. I'll gain some life. I can yeah. gain some life that way, yeah. That's gonna do it for me. I think I'm just gonna pass turn to you now, Olivia. I will untap my lands and I will draw a card. Well, uh, what are we doing if we're not going for it, hey? True. Hey. True. I will tap three to beast within the trading post. Hmm, interesting. In response, I'm going to tap for two mana. I'm gonna cast Deadly Dispute, and I'm gonna sacrifice the Pyre of Heroes. So I draw two cards and create a treasure token. That's gonna trigger the Vat of Rebirth, and I'm gonna put another oil counter on it. I'm gonna get a treasure, but I'm gonna immediately use that treasure, and I'm gonna tap it to discard a card and gain four life. And I will discard a Stronghold Assassin. That'll take me to seven. And then the trading post is gonna get beast within. And I'll make a 3-3 green beast creature token. Yep. When the trading post leaves the battlefield, the Vat of Rebirth will again get an oil counter and take up to five. And then? I'll just get large. I will get any township again. Jeez. Get large. Very large. Okay, so I have four four friends and a six four friend. Yeah, CGB, I'm gonna send everybody at you. Okay, that is a lot. It is. That is a lot. That's a lot! <laughs> I will block all five of them with all these creatures. Before damage, I will tap these four creatures for Convoke, and I will cast a Clever Concealment. Ooh! Clever Concealment will target all of my creatures. That will trigger Displacer Kitten, and the Displacer Kitten flicker target will be the Machine God's Effigy. Machine God's Effigy will enter as a copy of Arc Fiend of the Dross. And since it's an Arc Fiend of the Dross, it will enter with four oil counters on it. All right. Now my blocking creatures will phase out. They take no damage. Wow. Pretty good. I'll pass the turn. All right, untap all the things and my creatures phase back in. I have an Archfiend of the Draw, so it removes one oil counter. Ooh, I will man. draw for turn. I will tap my Forbidden Orchard for white. Jimmy, you get the spirit. Really? You oh. do. I'm gonna warn you, this time you might not want it. Okay, all right, well I'll get a spirit. I'll tap four more and then the white for a total of five. I'll cast a Damning Verdict, which will destroy all creatures with no counters on them. Oh no. Oh no. This will trigger the Displacer Kitten. I'm going to use the Displacer Kitten to target the Glass Pool Mimic. Jeez. Uh, yeah. This will exile the Glass Pool Mimic. Glass Pool Mimic will re-enter as a copy of Recruiter of the Guards. So I'll search my library for another creature with toughness two or less. All right, this time I'm gonna search for a Phyrexian Metamorph. Nice. Put that into my hand. Damning Verdict will resolve and destroy all creatures with no counters on them. I'm gonna have four creatures die on my board. And my Glass Pool Mimic is going to die. Zero for Olivia, because she has so many counters. All right, well, I have an Archfiend of the Dross, and so do you. So uh, you're gonna take two from my Archfiend triggering. I will lose two and go to six. And I had four creatures die, and you have an Archfiend, so that means I'm gonna lose eight, and I died to my own Archfiend of the Dross, kind of. <laughs> All right, there's also a Vran trigger because the undercover operative is still undercover as Vran. <laughs> so I will gain two life, going to eight. I will lose two and go to 21. And now there's all of those things. <laughs> all right, I will tap to post combat and I will cast Spirited Companion. <gasps> Puppy dog. It's a copycat deck, but I had to throw in two dogs. Oh, look, it's a shib. When that enters the battlefield, I will draw a card. Good dog. Bark. I'll play an island as a land for turn, mm -hmm. and then I will tap one, and I'm going to cast a Wayfarer's Bobble. This will trigger Displacer Kitten. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I am going to target Machine God's Effigy. I'm going to exile it, and I'm going to return it to the battlefield as a copy of Displacer Kitten. Uh-oh. After that, I'm done. Oh, Olivia, God. I finally got rid of Jimmy. Are you proud of me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I am not. I'll draw. CGB, how many cards in hand? Just the one. Just the Metamorph, hey? Just mm. the Metamorph. All right. I will tap four and get any Township to add some counters. Oof. And then I'm gonna full send. Jam. All right, go to blocks. Yep. I will block with the Displacer Kitten, the Undercover Operative, the Recruiter of the Guard, and the Spirited Companion. I will block everything except for one of the dog tokens. Okay. It doesn't matter what blocks what because they're all going to die. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, so one of the tokens will get through. So I will take five damage. Mm -hmm. Then everything without a shield counter will die. And my Undercover Operative is shields down. 
But it is a Vron, so there will be a trigger, mm -hmm. and I will gain two life, go into five, and Olivia, you will lose two life. All right, go to 19. All right, second main, I will tap three and crib swap the uh, recruiter. Oh, I needed one, that. One. That is both a cat and a dog spell. Yes. <laughs> Pretty cute. <laughs> I get my 1-1 one, one shapeshifter token. What you always wanted. Just what it was supposed to be. I will cross my fingers and toes and pass the turn. On your end step, I will tap no, two. No, it's my end step. And I'll sacrifice this Wayfarer's bobble. I will search for a basic planes. It will come onto the battlefield tapped. Olivia, will you please cut the deck? All right, here we go. Big draws. If I need this to be an island. I'll untap, I will draw a card. I did not watch the light vanish from his eyes. He's looking at it. All right, I will tap six for my commander, mm -hmm. Denry Clint, editor in chief. I will choose to have it enter with a first strike counter on Ooh. it. Ooh la la. <laughs> <laughs> I will play what I drew for turn. Command tower. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Cut you a spicy one, let's go. <laughs> I'll tap four for the card you know about, the Phyrexian Metamorph. I will make it a copy of the Prowling Serpipod because I always wanted my own oh. cat snake. <laughs> and it will enter with a first strike counter because of my commander. Cool. That's it. Olivia, your turn. <gasps> Oh my goodness. Tap. Do the dogs have it here? <sighs> I will swing with my assorted menagerie of dogs and cats and cat snakes. And I know how much you love them, so I won't even block. Wow! <laughs> Take all the damage from an assortment of lovely little doggies Yay! and kitties. Yeah! Oh! I win! Yay! Victory. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations to Olivia. Olivia. The dogs really helped here, I think. <laughs> it's funny. One she had a dog advantage. Jack, cat. Yeah, exactly. Everybody had cats, but she also had dogs, and that proved to be just enough, right? <laughs> that and Gavity Township. We'll, yeah. we'll take care of it. Mostly Gavity Township, let's be real. Yeah, kind of a crazy game. A lot of, a lot of swingy stuff happens. Yeah, it's awesome, and I really like seeing uh, CGB's take on on cats. It's not a dedicated cats deck; it's a copycat yeah, deck. It's so very, fun. it's very cute. Uh, so I, th I really loved the game, and it was fun seeing how many cats have really come to Magic, and how different all those decks play. It was really fun. Yeah, you can make a four-player pod, all cats decks, and they all feel sort of unique mm. to a different strategy, which was really cool. Yeah. If you want to get your hands on any cats or any cool cats from Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. I mean cool cats like characters, uh, cardkingdom.com slash command is the best place to go to buy your magic product singles. Everything that you need to build cool decks and make sure that you get all the cards you want in a timely manner. Card Kingdom has a huge inventory. We talk about this all the time, but it's one package that comes to you very conveniently. So let's say you wanted to build a Rin and Siri deck from scratch, add all those cards to your cart, check out, that's all going to come at once. All you have to do is sleeve it up and shuffle it up and you are ready to go. So that's why we love cardkingdom.com slash command. The other way you can support the show is at our other affiliate link over at ultrapro.com slash command. Ultrapro are the products that we trust to keep all of our decks safe and organized. What I love about Ultrapro is they have these crazy deals that come out of nowhere. Mm. So when I need to upgrade all of my deck boxes at once or if I need to replace a whole bunch of sleeves at once, I know that I can stay up to date on the sales with the Ultra Pro newsletter. Yeah, I don't sign up for almost any newsletters, mm. uh, but the Ultra Pro one I do just because they often have like huge discounts on stuff they're just yeah. kind of trying to move. And you're like, I could use those sleeves. I could yeah. use a couple more binders. And a lot of times the prices are very low, so. And you'll, like, when a new set drops, you want to be the first one to get access to to the cool new arts because you're like, I know the one I want is going to sell out. It always does. Uh, so you can stay up to date with the Ultra Pro news newsletter and you can shop there and support the show at ultrapro.com slash command. All right, everybody. Uh, again, if you want to join our Patreon or if you're already a patron, there will be an episode of Turn Talk with all the players discussing this game, including that heartbreaking moment where you got knocked out a little bit earlier. Rachel, so I'm going to love to hear <laughs> you talk about that. Um, yeah, so uh, patreon.com slash command zone is the place to go if you want to watch that. And you also get immediate access to all the Turn Talk episodes from the past. And there's been a bunch now. So it's pretty good value to just sign up. Yeah. And even if you just sign up for the month and just watch them all. And then, you know, 
We'd like you to stick around, but it's okay if you leave and Fun. come back in a few more months and then catch up again. That's a pretty good way to do it. So, uh, patreon.com slash command, uh, sorry, slash command zone on that mm. one. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We will see you uh, very, very soon. Hopefully in Barcelona. Yeah. Meow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, peace. Oh, man, I almost forgot. <laughs>